Hello and welcome to episode one of creating a bot using the Microsoft Bot Framework. Uh, as I mentioned before in this setup, this is uh, a no assumptions type tutorial. I'm not going to assume that you know how to do software development, let alone writing a bot. So let's just get straight into it. So what I would do to create a bot first would be, let's look it up. So I'm just type bot framework into my browser of choice. And this is the one, because I know it is. It's the dev.botframework.com. So let's go straight there. So normally I would read all of this and get really into it. Well, let's just take a little bit of a shortcut and go straight to the documentation. Go straight to the quick starts. Um, the first sort of point to discuss is what language, what programming language you want to use to create your bot. Um, and this is really down to your own personal choice. For me, it's going to be Microsoft.net. For you, it might be JavaScript. And if it is, you might not get a lot from this tutorial because I will go down the .NET route. So let's click on .NET. Uh, as advised here, there are some prerequisites that you want to install uh, before you start developing your bot. I would certainly recommend you do so. So this is what I would do. I would have come to this page, looked at the prerequisites. And if you haven't already, you need to get a tool that will allow you to actually write the code. Uh, in this case, it's Visual Studio. So let's go and have a look at that. So Visual Studio comes in two main flavors at the moment. Uh, the first one we can talk about is Visual Studio Code. And this is a sort of lightweight, but still quite powerful tool that you definitely can write bots in. Given that I'm aiming this at people that may not necessarily know how to write software, I would suggest that you don't start with Visual Studio Code because it's got a lot of configuration settings that can be quite confusing, especially if you're not familiar with terms like JSON. So I would move over to Visual Studio and then you've got three main flavors of that. And this is really to do with the licensing. So if you're a hobbyist or you don't really do things professionally, then download Community, you'll be fine with that. Uh, if you are going to create a bot that you're going to sell on, then you're going to need to have professional really for the licensing. Um, so whichever one, whichever flavor it suits you at the moment, I would download one of those. And once that's downloaded, we can move on to the next step. So we come back here, uh, assuming you've downloaded Visual Studio or you already have it. You need to get, I say need, I recommend you get the bot builder template. And this will allow you to create bot applications uh, using a skeleton to start with, which is a much easier way of doing it than trying to do it completely from scratch. So the way you get that, let's have a look at this. So this is taking us to the marketplace. Now you can get it from Visual Studio directly, or you can download it from here, whichever way is your favorite way of doing it. So you just press download, wait for that to download and install it. And then you'll be ready to create a bot application. But even though you can create a bot application, you do need something to run it on, especially when you start. And the recommended way of doing that is to get hold of the bot framework emulator. So let's go and take a look at that. What it would be if I go to the tab? Uh, crazy. Right, so go to the bot framework emulator. Now this is taking us to a separate project and it's something you've got to understand is that the bot development toolkit or software development toolkit SDK that is a separate entity to the emulator so these two projects that have been worked on have been worked on kind of side by side but they are two separate entities they work uh, against different versions of the of the bot framework or they require different versions um, the emulator will run against version 3 or version 4, or it's not necessarily have to have the version 4 as the gain installed, etc. Um, now, because of this, it makes this a bit more complicated to get your head around, at least it did for me. So let's just try and follow this, and I'll take you through it. So get up and running, download the latest emulator. So you click there. 
And this takes you to the GitHub site, which is why I sort of talked about why this is separate and a little bit more complicated. So this now have to go and try and figure out where to get this from. So you just follow the instructions here, download from the GitHub releases. Now, if you're not familiar with GitHub, then this is going to be completely alien to you. So what this has done is it's taken us to the results of a project that builds the emulator. And what you're looking for here, what you need to make sure that you've got hold of is where it says latest release here. That's really important. And you also want something along the lines of stable build. That's something that should uh, be telling you that this may not be the exact latest version of the emulator, but it's the one that people have most trust in. The next thing to note here is we've got several what appear to be versions of the emulator. Now, the emulator can run on several different platforms, and you can develop the bot on several different platforms. So, for example, if you're a Linux user, then you might want to be looking at one of these uh, x86, 64, i36 images, download that and install it. Or if you're a Mac user, you might want to go for the DMG file. For me, I'm a Windows user, so I'm going to click here, download that, and install the emulator from there. So go ahead and do that. Install the emulator of your choice. I'm kind of assuming you're a Windows user. Maybe a bad assumption for me. But download the bot emulator, and once that's ready, we can go back to our prerequisites. And we are completed one, two, and three here. And this now is about somehow managing to get all the knowledge of ASP.NET Core to do your bot frameworks with. Don't worry, you won't have to get that straight away. But now we're at this point, we should have our Visual Studio, we've got our templates, we've got our emulator installed, so now we can create our first bot. So we launch Visual Studio. And we go to File, New, Project. Oh, it's taking me straight there. Normally, I would have to go to a search. This is what, how I do it. I type bot in here. So that filters all the different sorts of projects that go here, several different sorts of projects. Ends up with just the ones with bot in it. Obviously not necessarily bot. Obviously got bottle web project here. Um, we've got a couple of different types of bot projects in here, but the one I would recommend you use is the empty bot. So that will give us just enough code to get our site up and running and the bot working against the site um, but it will won't have a lot of noise in there that would be confusing to us so let's just create a bot i'm going to call mine maybot take a note of the location um, you shouldn't lose that visual studio should keep track of this for you but just in case just take a little note about where you're putting this it's going to create a new project folder for you if you, again, if you're not familiar with repositories and Git and DevOps and things like that, don't worry too much about that right now. Uh, we can come back to that at a later date. But just know that this is the folder. It's going to be stored locally on your disk for now. So should your machine suddenly catch fire and die, then you will lose your work. Um, but hopefully that won't happen. So let's press OK. So now it's creating a project for us. Again, if you're new to software development, what's happened here is it's created this uh, project called Maybot, and this is of a type that is going to give us a bot at the end of the day. It's inside something called a solution. This just confuses people when they're new to this. So a solution is a collection of different projects that are related. Uh, we've only got the one project at the moment, so hence the project and the solution have the same name. Don't worry too much about that right now. Just know that the Maybot is your currently going to be the project that's going to run. So once we have this, it all kind of looks okay to me. If you were really sharp-eyed, you would have noticed there was a little yellow triangle on the dependencies that went away. And that's quite typical for a bot or version 4 bot project because it's using .NET Core. And .NET Core uses a lot of these dependencies, a lot of NuGet dependencies. Again, don't worry too much if you don't know what that means. Well, basically, those things are shown to the project, and then it has to go off to the internet and download some additional um, files. So these files, it probably has downloaded from the internet. So whilst it didn't have them, you'd have got a little yellow triangle. And when it gets them, the little yellow triangle goes away. So don't panic about that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to see whether this thing works. 
So you come up to the debug menu and you say, oops, debug menu, you say start debugging. Uh, for me, I prefer to use the kind of video media control buttons. So you see the little uh, triangle here, just like a kind of uh, MP3 player. So we press that and you notice it's got a little IS Express next to it. And what that means is it's going to run this as inside of a web server. Uh, but the web server is going to be an express version of a web server, i.e. it's going to be running on our local machine. So when we press run here, just keep an eye down here. See, that's just suddenly popped up. So that's IS Express, so that's now started and running. If we look at that, we can see it's got view sites. It's got a site now called Maybot. In our browser, our browser has gone to that site and it's showing us the Maybot page. So this is just a HTML page that's been rendered showing us that the bot is ready. But this isn't actually the bot. This isn't the interface you, a user would see themselves. So in order to know what the user would see, we need to go and find the emulator. So I just type bot in the search here, bot parameter emulator, start that up. And while that's starting, I'm going to go to the folder, the project, I was just show you that again so that's right click on that open folder in file explorer takes us to file explorer all i really want here to be honest is the path but just to note that there's something called maybot.bot in here and that's what the bot emulator will be looking for so let's grab that do open bot oh, you're already there but let's just take you through the motion so you select that choose that file And now we are in a chat window. So this is the main interface to the bot. Let's just test uh, that the bot is working. Again, this is just a skeleton, very low empty bot, very low key. So we just need to just type something in here and it's just gonna respond with hello world. So if you get the hello world back after typing something, you know that everything's working and the setup episode is complete and finished. So I hope that's been useful and come and join me in episode two where we can find out what all this lot means here and do something a little bit more useful with a bot. Okay, thank you.